It's another great Sunday, and I joyfully welcome you to another exciting edition of Christian Connect on ETV Ghana. Of course, this is the last Sunday in the month of April 2022, and is a week after the remembrance of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. To him alone be glory and honor forever and ever. Let me say thank you to Osasio Fashion for providing my outfit. So uh, you can always check out some of the beautiful designs Osasio Fashion has on Facebook and on Instagram as well. You can give the CEO a call on 0243 884. Osasio Fashion says, style your occasion. And as I indicated, uh, today is exactly a week after we remembered the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. But when he resurrected, he said to his disciples, go therefore to all nations and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them all that I have commanded you. And of course, this has been described as the Great Commission. So today on Christian Connect, we would like to know what the Great Commission is, what is the message, who is qualified uh, to partake in the Great Commission. And you are welcome to share your opinions and your ideas with us on Facebook as well. So you can just go to facebook.com slash etvghana and leave your comments there. This is Christian Connect. We take a break. And when I come back, I will introduce to you our guest for today. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana. Today we are looking at understanding the Great Commission. And to help us do that is the president of the Ghana Evangelical Missions Association and uh, also the executive director for the One Way Africa. And his name is very interesting, um, Reverend Dr. Re Mensa Mensa. <laughs> Rev. Dr. Welcome. Thank you for... I like the repetition <laughs> of your name, Mensa Mensa. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, yes, fantastic. Good also to be here. joining us today is Apostle Emmanuel Te Tenor. Yes, Apostle Emmanuel Tenor is with the Harvest Chapel International. Apostle, welcome. God bless you. How are you doing today? By God's grace. Great, great. So now that... Let me start with um, um, Reverend Dr. Ray Mensa, and um, you are with the Ghana Evangelical missions association that's, that's right uh, we know the term the great commission mm -hmm. is not exactly written in the bible that's right so when we say the great commission what is it thank you brother paul thanks for having us it's 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 amazing we've just come out of easter like you said and easter is about the great commission so it's such a beautiful time to describe and to, to talk about the great commission mm -hmm. is you'll find in the bible as you said but it's described the Great Commission because it's a commission, it's, it's a mission, it's an assignment, it's a command given by our Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. So, it, and because we believe it's the greatest of all the missions he gave, the greatest of all the commissions, that's why missiologists have termed it the Great Commission. It's the assignment that believers will take the gospel to the nations, to preach to everyone. And as we proceed, we'll talk about the scriptures. The Great Commission is in all the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and also in the Book of Acts, and we'll be looking at it. And so it's that assignment, that command, that commission, and that we should take the Gospel to the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. That's in simply the Great Commission. Right, so taking the um, uh, Gospel to the end of the earth, mm -hmm. is it not for pastors like you? Mm -hmm. Good question. People ask that always. You know, they expect that it will be for pastors like me, for evangelists like uh, Apostle <laughs> Emmanuel here, uh, for missionaries, you know. But it's not so. Because we are just like 1 to 3% of the Christian population. Those who are full-time clergy, we are just about 1 to 3% of the Christian population. Some even say 1%. So if the 1% is to do the work, it can never be done. Our Lord Jesus Christ says in Matthew 9, 38, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. 
The workers are few because majority of the church have left the work on full-time pastors and full-time evangelists and missionaries. But that cannot be done because the work is too gargantuan, it's too humongous, it's too huge, it's too massive for just a few. And so the work is for everyone. Every, once you're a believer, it, the work is for you. The Great Commission was given not just to the 12 apostles or to apostles, but to everybody who calls Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Charles means the day the church will realize that we're all missionaries, the end will come because then we can finish the work. Because we are a huge group of people, but only a few are doing. 2,000 years after Jesus said that still the harvest is plenty, but the harvesters and workers are still very few. So I'm very happy about this program and we can talk about it. And I pray that God will really use it to activate the body of Christ, to wake up the sleeping giant that the people in our churches, wonderful churches in Ghana, wonderful churches in Africa and all over the world, that uh, people will rise up and take the Great Commission serious. Mm, great. We have to take it serious. Uh, Apostle Teno, um, uh, uh, Reverend Doctor just said that uh, uh, we will wake up. Do you think that we are sleeping on the Great Commission? Okay, for me, uh, thank you. Um, I think we are sleeping. Because if, if we look at the sacrifice the Master Jesus went through for us and what we are doing, we are sleeping. Because the number of people that are not saved, even in our country, Ghana, Sometimes when you are in Accra, you think everybody is saved. Mm -hmm. Everybody goes to church. There are a lot of churches here and there. But sometimes when you travel to the interland, the northern region, and some of the eastern region, these villages, there are some people that have not even heard about Christ before. Mm -hmm. They've not seen Bible before. They've not known anything like preaching. So I believe that it is time that we, we wake up as a body, as individuals, as the doctor said, this work is not for a specific group of people. It is for all of us. Like he said, when you read the book of Mark 16, 15, he said, and he said unto them, that them is me and you. He said unto them, go ye into all the world. Preach the gospel to every creature. So the question is, is has every creature heard the word? If the answer is no, then we are sleeping. We must wake up. So when we say the Great Commission, let's uh, understand it clearly. Is it the same as soul winning? Yes, I would say um, it's, it's, it's soul winning and it's also evangelism. It's the same word. It's the same. Hmm. Yeah. So um, it's about um, soul winning. Do, do I need to uh, win souls before perhaps it will be recognized that I am partaking in the uh, Great Commission. Maybe Reverend Doctor, you can take that for us, Reverend okay. Mensah. Thank you, Brother Paul. So a Great Commission is one commission, but then there could be different parts. But definitely you have to win souls. But everybody has a dominant call. So some people will pray. The essence, we say pray, give, go. Okay, so a Great Commission is so this, is this big assignment that we have. But everybody has a role to play. But so winning is part of it. And it's a key part, like uh, Apostle said, so in evangelism, witnessing, uh, missions, uh, it all comes back to fulfilling the Great Commission, one assignment. But people have dominant calls or gifts. So some are called to be intercessors. They will pray for souls, and, and there are people like that. It doesn't excuse them from not so winning, yeah. but their dominant call is praying. And they pray and things happen. That's their call as intercessors. Then you have people who are also giving and that's their dominant call. They give for people to go. I we were having a, a, a discussion before we started the show about full-time evangelists and missionaries. And many times, people have to send them. They are goers and they are senders. So there are two groups. Uh, John Piper said, you're either a goer, a sender, or you're disobedient. Yes. <laughs> Which part do you fall? That's the question to you today, my dear brother, my dear sister in Christ. <laughs> are you a goer, are you a sender, or a disobedient? Mm -hmm. So those who are called to go, they will go as full-time missionaries, full-time evangelists, uh, full-time pastors, and they have to be supported by the rest of the church. And, and so some are the, uh, dominant goers, dominant people who pray, and dominant uh, givers. But the thing about sharing the gospel, and I believe as the show goes on, we'll say it's supposed to be so simple. It's a conversation, like we're having a conversation. Everybody is supposed to be able to tell someone about Jesus. It's not supposed to be people who are evangelists alone. And so we want to make soul winning very simple. 
demystified. There's a lot of mystery about it, and people think, I don't know what to say, yeah. I don't know how to go about it. Yeah. But uh, we train people how to, it's very simple. It's just having a conversation, you know, and we can get people to know about Jesus. I, I, I know your, your organization, One Way, yes. um, trains people yes. on uh, the Great Commission or how yes. to send the message. But <laughs> before I go to Apostle Tenno, yes. I want to ask you, what is the key message okay. uh, of the Great Commission? Okay, good. So maybe it's time to bring in the Great Commission scriptures and, and then we'll find out. And then I'll touch on the area each one touches on. Okay, so the first one we find in the Gospel of Matthew. Okay, so we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and us, like I said. And then Matthew says, all authority and power has been given to me. Okay, all authority has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. So that's the Great Commission scripture in Matthew. Matthew 28, 18 to 20. Then when you come to Mark, you find in Mark 16, 15, it says, Go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Who, the one who does not believe will be condemned. So that's a great commission in Mark. So we say that's the scoop. So this, the first one is the, uh, what they call the principle of the great commission, is to make disciples in Matthew. Then the scope of the great commission is in Mark. That's the whole world. Every single person, nobody is exempted. Then you come to the message, which is a question you asked me. The message of the Great Commission, we find it in Luke chapter 24, verse 47. It says, And repentance and forgiveness of sins shall be preached to all nations, starting from Jerusalem. So the message is repentance and forgiveness of sins, according to Luke 24, 47. Then you come to John 20, 21, which is the model of the Great Commission. It says, As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. This is our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I am sending you, Brother Paul. I'm sending you, Apostle Samson, uh, Emmanuel. I'm Emmanuel. sending you. Maybe you are called Sister Charity. Maybe you are called Sister Alma. Maybe you are called Brother Kweku or Brother Andrew. Or whatever your name is, Jesus says, I am sending you. Just as the Father sent him, he is also sending us. So nobody is exempted. We are all sent. <laughs> Everybody mm -hmm. in the church is sent. Yeah. God is a sender. And everybody in the church is a saint one. Mm. Very, very interesting. Apostle Tenno, so uh, where am I supposed to be sent to? Is it, uh, you know, uh, we have missionaries coming from abroad those days to this place. Am I supposed to, is it all nations? Am I supposed to be going to other countries to, so that I can say that, okay, I'm also partaking in the Great Commission as a missionary and all that? Okay, I would say no. We are not restricted to a particular nation, a country, or a village, or a city, or no. For instance, in your office here, you, 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 you can be a missionary here. I like something the doctor said, that it, so winning is very, very easy, that people think that you need to know scriptures, how to preach before you can win souls. No. For instance, this woman that Jesus met at the well, it was through the testimony. The woman just shared the testimony, and a whole village or a whole city was conveyed to go and see Christ. Mm -hmm. When you read Psalm 105, uh, Psalm 105, I, I open, I want to uh, read it for us. Right. Psalm 105, 1, 2. 1 and 2. Psalm 105, 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I saw a scripture there that I want to read mm -hmm. for us. He said, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. You can't tell me God has not done anything for you as a Christian. So, like what you are saying, I don't need to travel to America, to the UK, to, to any country to become a missionary. I can be a missionary in my office. I can be a missionary in my school. Wherever I find myself as a Christian, I am a missionary. I am a soul winner. I am an evangelist. Mm -hmm. I may not know how to preach. But I have testimony mm. where so God picked me from. Mm. The day I encountered Jesus, the transformations I have experienced in my life is a message enough to draw people to Christ. Mm. So there is no specific location. Everywhere you are, you can win souls, you can be a missionary anywhere. One very interesting thing that Jesus also said was, um, or is, uh, making disciples. Mm. Uh, we'll talk about making of disciples um, uh, maybe as a whole subject later or topic later. Mm. But when you say making disciples, what does it mean? If I go and tell somebody or share my testimony, um, does it include the making of disciples? What does it mean? I was you can uh, take okay. that, making of disciples. Okay, thank you. 
making of disciples for instance I, I am into street evangelism I do a lot of street preaching here and there and sometimes we are there and we are preaching and somebody just gets off from their car he said I love what you are doing I'm, I'm touched to join you please am I allowed I said why not it's the work of God once the mission the, the motive is right geared towards souls you are welcome on board and by the grace of God I have some people that were dropped from cars by at the street side they join us and we, we disciple them now as I'm talking to you some of them are also winning souls elsewhere they came to learn from what we are doing discipleship was about imparting what I, I don't know how to put it but imparting to someone what God has, has, has given to you have, have done to you so that the person will also carry the same message to others so for instance the street like this we have people who have joined us who have also become we, we've discipled them through what they see the way we preached mm -hmm. the things we're doing and they've gone uh, uh, there's a couple in the immigration this woman took a whole year leave he said he want to work for God so he sacrificed one year without salary as a custom officer in Ghana here they joined us at the street evangelism for a whole year he and the husband will be coming every morning every morning every morning as I'm talking to you now they bought their own machines. They are seriously into street evangelism now. Wow. Mm. So if I'm in a trotro and I just he <coughs> hear something that you are preaching, the car is just passing. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm touched, wh what do I do? H it doesn't mean your the Great Commission is still being fulfilled. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah. Ray. Um, yes. So, like, uh, I think we are on the right track. The Great Commission... It's, it says make disciples. So I, I shared the different parts of it, but the ultimate is that people are made disciples. Okay, of, and disciple is basically a learner, a follower of Jesus Christ. And so it's one more mature believer teaching another believer to become Christ-like, to become okay. like Jesus. So it's a process. So somebody who hears, like uh, Apostle Emmanuel says, somebody might hear on the street, and, like, and then it's convicted. So the woman says, now I want to take one year off. That's part of the discipleship process. It's a process, not a one-time thing. Yeah. Evangelism might be a one-time thing and the person here, but discipleship is a lifetime thing. We keep growing. <laughs> we are still disciples. You don't get to a point that say, now you have graduated <laughs> from being a disciple. We are all disciples, and that's why we go to church every week, and we are learning, reading our Bible every day and praying every day. It's, it's a process, and we are becoming like Christ. Christ-likeness will bring that place of transformation, of holiness, of purity, of obedience to Christ. So right. that's very important. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana. And today we are looking at understanding the Great Commission and it's been very, very interesting. We'll take a break, but before the break, we'll take the scripture of the day and we'll be back to continue with our discussion. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana. We are looking at understanding the Great Commission, and to help us do that today is Apostle Emmanuel uh, Teno of Harvest Chapel International and Reverend Dr. Ray Mensa Mensa of the Ghana Evangelical Missions Association and also One Way Africa. <laughs> um, so, um, Doc, so um, somebody will say, like we we're saying sometimes, Oh, it's so easy. Mm -hmm. Share your testimony and all those things. But somebody will say, I have no testimony. I don't know how mm -hmm. I should approach the person. The person may ask me questions that mm -hmm. I may not be able to answer. Mm -hmm. In that case, what should the person do? Okay, so statistics show fear is the number one reason Christians don't share their faith. And so that fear, a fear of I don't know what to say, I don't know how to answer questions. I don't have a, uh, an explanation. I don't know where to begin. That fear, fear of ridicule, fear of persecution. There are countries when you preach the gospel, you can be in trouble, serious trouble, even death. So there are all kinds of fears. But fear is the number one reason people don't share the gospel. Mm -hmm. Statistics also have shown that only 2%, by the power, only 2% of Christians share their faith on a regular basis. Wow. 
yeah, that is that is that is sad. That I don't know how to. That's wow. terrible, terrible. Mm -hmm. So only few people are really sharing their faith. I don't know when was the last time somebody shared the gospel with you. And so we uh, we try to demystify those fears and and take it away, take away their excuses. Yeah. So I don't know what to do. There are some videos I have when we are doing training. We share with people. And so we say, oh, I don't know what to say. Oh, I'll be radical, or maybe I don't know the scriptures there. The guy had eight excuses, and, and <laughs> at the end he found out their excuses. But it's, 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 it's just what you know, like he was saying. It's, 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 we have it. You know, I have a friend from the U.S. who said, oh, I don't have a testimony uh, because she was brought up in the church. She never did all those bad things. <laughs> so there are two groups of people, those who or three, those who are minimal, normal, uh, just few bad things, and those who, but the Bible says all have sinned actually and fallen short of the glory of God. There's nobody who is... Everybody is a sinner. We are saved by grace. But there are different types of sinners, you know. <laughs> there are some people, they go through church, they go through school, they never go through the bad things. And praise God for that. Then you have those who, who are normal, do some few, but then there are those who go way off and do horrible things. And, and thank God, anybody can be saved. And, and God has saved us. God has saved me. Amen. But she, so she grew up and married her husband at a young age. She's never, never had sex before marriage. Uh, never did all those things. So she said, I don't have a testimony. I said, you have a testimony. That's a testimony. <laughs> it's God who kept you. Mm. You have a testimony. I said, how could you go through uh, this kind of world and not do all those evil things, wrong things, that even peer pressures, the, the teenage years? It's God. That's a yeah, testimony. That's a testimony. That's a testimony. And then if you, 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 you did all the horrible things too, you, you went to a nightclub, you drank, you smoked, you, you did all those, you had sex, and you had that one too, and you're safe, that's a testimony. Mm. <laughs> so whether you did that, you, don't, you still have a testimony. You can't say you don't have a testimony because you, it's by grace you have been saved, true faith. We, have, have, we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory. There's nobody who is perfect. There's nobody who is sinless. Everybody has, even those who say they are so, so good, if you, if you go deep, deep, you find out that they still have some things because we are, we are fallen, human nature. So it's only by grace that we are saved. Okay. Fantastic. Yeah. Only by grace. I, I was also telling you, you know, with the advancement of technology, I mean, those that Jesus said we should go to all nations, I'm sure people were walking using uh, <laughs> uh, horses and all Good those colors. things. These days, what would you say is the platform for the Great Commission? We, 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 are, we are too much blessed in this time that... Um, for instance, I look at social media. And sometimes I ask myself, if the way, excuse me to say, evil news travel, when there is something bad happening in a village somewhere in Ghana, less than 15 minutes you get to know it. And then, less than 15 minutes, you will see somebody in that same village who maybe have never gone to school before, but he can do live streaming. You watch it live. Mm -hmm. Technology has come to facilitate the Great Commission and Evangelism. That we can be anywhere. For instance, this program, if we were to do so in here, in your office here alone, many people would not get to here. But now, there are thousands of people, by virtue of technology, who are getting information of what we are doing here. So, in this age, I would say that we are, we are blessed and we don't have excuse. Social media is helping us. A lot of things are helping us. Mm. So, if I feel, as for me, I'm shy, I just can't go and tell somebody this whole... I'm going to use my uh, Facebook page mm -hmm. and then maybe every day or uh, I'll be writing something on my Facebook page. Is mm -hmm. that the part? Is that taking part of the Great Commission? Yes. Giving scriptures. I, I, one of the things I love is that sometimes um, there is this guy I saw on social media who is not into live video, live streaming. All he does is that he releases scriptures every day. And sometimes some of the scriptures he releases are very touching. You just, it's like in a day you are, you are confused, you are, you, are, you are trusting God for something, and you chance on a particular scripture that says exactly what you are going through. Mm. So to that guy, I don't know maybe if he, he thinks he's doing evangelism or the Great Commission, or he's just posting something there. But I can tell you that many people will get inspiration, will get blessed through those scriptures he placed on, on the social media platform. Mm. So, like you are saying, you don't need to, you may be shy, but you can do a live streaming video to your friends and maybe in, in, with your school people alone, and it will amaze you that the people you are doing the live stream, somebody may have visited them. Oh, what are you watching? I'm watching a colleague of mine in the school who have been doing, let me watch. 
and that person can be touched by that video. Mm -hmm. So I'm not a pastor. Mm -hmm. I, I, I go, I tell somebody about Christ mm -hmm. and the person, okay, uh, kind of accepts Christ. Mm -hmm. What do I do? What, what, what's the next step for me? Mm -hmm. what, what should I do, uh, Reverend Doctor? Okay. Should I take the person to my church or what should I, <laughs> should I baptize the person <laughs> or what's the next step? Yeah, it's, it's good. So those are discipleship questions then because mm -hmm. once a person comes to Christ then it begin a, a discipleship journey. Okay, so we, we tell people, you tell, if I lead someone to Christ, I'll tell him within the next 24 to 40, 48 hours, you also try and share the gospel with someone. I, I try to encourage them to do that. Then you tell them, you, the first, but the first thing you do is to give them assurance of salvation. Okay, only God knows who is truly saved. But if they pray with you in faith and, and there's repentance, then you can assure them according to the scriptures, okay, according to Romans chapter 10. The same thing. If you believe in your heart that God, that Christ died for you and was raised from the dead, then you'll be saved. So according to the scriptures, it's not based on your own emotions. So you give them a chance of salvation. That is very important. And then you encourage them to pray every day, to read their Bible every day, and to go to church. Yeah, they can go with you to church if you are in the same locality. But for instance, they don't stay in your locality or they, they want to go somewhere else. You encourage them to go to a good Bible-believing church and to plug in, okay, and then also to share the gospel. I encourage people, once they get saved, I encourage the people I lead to Christ to also share the gospel. And then they begin the journey of growing. And once they plug into a church, they will be taken up into a new believers class and, and somebody will take them up, discipling them. The church that perhaps if they are not going to your church and they yes. are going to a different church, do yeah. you have to call the pastor there to say that, okay, this person is coming and all those things? No, not necessarily. You might not know, unless you know the pastor in the church. But if you don't know, maybe they stay in another town, you met them in the bus. You just encourage them. And there are many stories. And I want to chip in. This is a good question because there are, there are people, there's a school of thought that if you can't disciple uh, somebody personally, then don't preach the gospel to them. <laughs> I don't hold that view. Because if we do that, then only few people will be saved. <laughs> you know? Otherwise, then you don't have to do street evangelism. <laughs> but, you know, refer. So one lady I taught in the, in the seminary, she, she asked me that question because she's leading the evangelism team in the church. And some of the members says, oh, if we can't disciple them or they won't come to our church, then let's not preach to the gospel to them. And she was asking, she was a little confused. And then I asked her own salvation story. And she says it was in junior high school and one of her teachers spoke the gospel, mm -hmm. preached the gospel to her and told her uh, which church to go to. And directed her, in this case, it was an Assemblies of God church. said, that's a good church, go there. The, the man was not in that town where the school was. He was staying out of town. Mm -hmm. And she went there and the man didn't call the pastor. He just said, go to that church. And then... And she went and she plugged in and now she's a pastor. And so we encourage people, we refer people, say, oh, these are good churches. If there's a church there, a Bible-believing church, go. And we challenge people to go. You cannot disciple every single person you preach the gospel to, but you challenge them and direct them to good Bible-believing churches. Mm. And you can also disciple them through WhatsApp, through Facebook, through mm. your phone technology today. Uh, one of the um, um, instructions about the Great Commission was teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. Mm -hmm. And we live in a community, people know us, we are in school and all those things. And um, Apostle Tenor, sometimes you, you go and preach the, the word and ask somebody, you talk about repentance, you know, say, so, so <laughs> looking at your own weaknesses, uh, I mean, what should you do in such circumstances? Apostle Taylor, okay, you can that um, what I would say is um, I, I came up with something that I call character evangelism. Mm. This is where you are using your life as an example. You are, you are, you are using your life. I, I, I said this is the process of exhibiting exemplary character or lifestyle before the ungodly, trusting God to use that to change their lives. I may be a sinner. Maybe I used to be a bad person in the community, but I said, I've changed. It must, people must see my character, that my character has changed. Because I also believe that sometimes our character is more evangelistic than our, even our sermon. Somebody may follow you to God. Somebody may be drawn to Christ. Or somebody may be won to Christ because of your character. They may know you as you were stubborn once, once in, the, in the community. You used to go with them and all of a sudden you said you've changed. But you, you shouldn't argue with them. Just live an exemplary life. Now I am saved. Let me live the Christ-like life. God should help us to be, to, 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 
I, I don't know if what I'm saying you get mm -hmm. that our character should be to speak more yes. than our even our sermon. Mm -hmm. This is Christian Correct, and we are looking at the Great Commission today. Uh, when you read Acts of the Apostles, and even before Jesus' death, he asked them to stay till the Holy Spirit uh, comes on them. And yes. he said, when the Holy Spirit comes on you, you'll be my witnesses all over. Mm -hmm. So um, how do I go on? Do I have to know that, okay, now I'm filled with the Holy Spirit before I can go and preach the gospel? Good question. So remember I was talking about the Great Commission in its entirety. I started uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. What mm -hmm. I, I didn't get to was Acts chapter 1, verse 8, in which you have just quoted. You said, I receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Then you be my witnesses. Mm -hmm. That's Jesus speaking a lot. In your, so Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the earth, the ends of the earth. That's amazing. And so we say the power of the Great Commission is the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Once you're born again, you have received the Holy Spirit. Okay, there's the Holy Spirit baptism, and but that's, I won't go into all that, the denominational mm. stuff, but the basic thing is that you are, uh, the Holy Spirit is what renews you. You have the Holy Spirit, and you have the power to do the Great Commission. There's no excuse. You don't need any other power. Once you are born again, you are a child of God, you have the power. The Holy Spirit is the power of the Great Commission, and you start from your Jerusalem. It's, the King James is very powerful. It says both. So both in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth, but you can do all. Every church is supposed to do all in, in simultaneously. But some could be in prayer. Some could be through short-term missions. If time will last, we'll, we'll, we'll throw more light on that. But you can be here and praying for the nations and praying mm. for people groups, for people mm. from far. Okay, And you could take trips. But your Jerusalem, your community, your school, your work, as you go. Basically, I say, as you go, big disciples. As you go, proclaim. And so it's just sharing. Somebody says, uh, evangelism is like one beggar telling another beggar where to find bread. Very simple. He said, I was a sinner. <laughs> now I'm saved. Mm -hmm. Like the woman at the well, yeah. you know. So she just met Jesus. She went to her town and said, come and t see a man who told me everything. That's evangelism. You don't need to have a PhD in theology. Mm. It's just your experience. Say, wow, I was a sinner. Jesus saved me. Can you imagine what Jesus did for me? It's, it's testifying. You'll be my witness. You're witnessing of the power of the Holy Spirit. You're witnessing of, of the salvation you have experienced, of that change, that transformation of the power. Of God. If believers will understand that, it will be so easy for people to share their faith. This is Christian Connect. This is very, very exciting, very inspiring, and encouraging as well because knowing that we can easily go out there and share the gospel. Let's take the fact file, and when we come back, we'll be back, uh, we'll, we will wrap up with that. They feel a stewardship of the site, and I think that's a great way to describe it. They understand they've got something special at Mangala. They want to share it with as many people as possible, while at the same time preserve it for generations to come. Hi, I'm Jeremy. Hello, Jeremy. I'm Jennifer. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Well, welcome to Magdala, the ancient first century Jewish town. Thank you. And we have an active archaeological dig going on right as we speak. I'm looking forward to seeing everything. Well, why don't I show you around? Great, let's go. Okay. This is an active archaeological site. About three months out of the year, they're working on uncovering new things. Universities send volunteers. Every couple of weeks, they rotate out. Recently, they found an incense shovel dating to the second temple period, Herod's period, the time of Jesus. So there's a lot going on right now. Yes, okay. we have pilgrims coming in every day. So what do we have here, Jennifer? This is a first century synagogue in the Galilee area. It's one of seven first century synagogues that we find in Israel. Actually, many call it the Pompeii of Israel because of the beautiful design of the mosaic, the frescoes. It's very well preserved. And we have many different treasures inside. Okay, now I noticed the entryway here. These stones look like they're Herodian. They've got the edges on them. Exactly. We actually found those entrance stones in a corner in the synagogue 
which was very curious and with different clues have led us to the conclusion that the people themselves took apart their synagogue before the Romans came in, in the year 67 AD. This is Christian Connect on ETV Ghana, and we are looking at understanding the Great Commission and how we can partake in it. And I'm sure you've learned a lot, just in case you've, you just tune in, you can just go to Facebook. Uh, the whole show is there, and you can start and watch uh, from beginning to the end because we have had a very, very great and exciting um, discussion. So let's continue with the discussion. Um, uh, Reverend Doctor, uh, we know individuals uh, can go and um, uh, propagate the gospel or uh, proclaim the gospel to other people. How about the church itself? Uh, what should the church do? Okay. The church is, is the body of Christ and is a church that is that, that organ, organ uh, uh, body that the individuals are part of. Okay, I like what the Lausanne Covenant says. It says it takes the whole church to take the whole gospel to the whole world. Whole church, whole gospel, whole world. <laughs> Nobody's exempted. Okay, so I, I was in a radio station this week and preaching on the church on Sunday, and we're talking about the same thing. Okay, that nobody's exempted. So the church has to see its mission. Okay, I, I will touch on the three uh, fold mission of the church in the Jiffy. But when the church understands that the, the men's ministry, the women's ministry, the youth ministry, the children's ministry, nobody's exempted. All departments, they should have the Great Commission at the core of everything they do. The choir, the protocol, the security, every, everybody. It shouldn't be just, oh, we are the choir, so oh, we are ushers. But the Great Commission should be at the core of everything the church. That's the mandate of the Christian. That's the mandate of the church. The church that does not have the Great Commission as its mandate, as its four uh, operation or core value, is missed it. And many churches, unfortunately, have missed. And I pray that God will use this program to, to bring revival to many churches. We need that revival. And so the children, nobody's exempted. You can't say, oh, they are children. No, everybody knows. And so when I was preaching at a certain church on Sunday, and the pastor after came back and, and said, wow, thank you for seeing that. But she, she knew of a case in Ghana where an 8-year-old led an 80-year-old woman to Christ. 8-year-old <laughs> kid <laughs> led an 80-year-old woman to an Christ. 80. Eight, yes, 80 years uh, old. 8 to 80. 8 to 80. Wow. <laughs> can wow. you imagine? Wow. So you can say, oh, I'm just a kid. I don't know yeah. what. No, there's no uh, excuse. There's no exemption. Mm -hmm. The whole church. And let me just end with this, and then you come in with mm -hmm. the threefold mission. Okay, so Brother Paul, the, what we call the upward mission. Okay, the upward mission or outreach. That's to God. You know, Psalm 29, Psalm 100. It's a, enter his gates with thanksgiving. His cause. And the church in Ghana, the church in Africa, we, we do well. Oh. When my friends come from the Western world, they are mesmerized. Like, we have exorbitant praise. We know mm. how to praise God. Nobody praises God like the <laughs> mm. Africans. Somebody says, in heaven, the Africans are going to lead the choir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. we, we know how to praise God. We bring an anchor, we dance, so we do well with up, and we pray. The African church is a praying church. Mm. The Ghana church is a praying church. So the upward mission, we have no problem. Then the inward mission, okay, is enrich, is teaching, is discipleship, is it's everything to develop. We do well. We have some of the best Bible teachers in Ghana, some of the best preachers in Bangladesh. Praise God for that. Where we fall short is the outward mission. So after we worship God upward, inward, and we have been trained, the next progression is supposed to be what? Outreach, outward. That's where the Great Commission comes in. But most churches focus on the two. Except new churches, the Great Commission is at the forefront of new churches. They are evangelistic. But once the churches grow, and things are fine, then we become complacent. That's the story of most churches, maybe 98%. The churches become complacent, the pastors become complacent, and then we go into maintenance mood, and then the evangelism is, is thrown to the back door, and we don't, if you call for evangelism, Brother Paul, I ask pastor, I'm training all the time, and I ask pastor, if you say, Saturday, today, you say, we are going for evangelism Saturday. How many will show up? Some will say two, mm -hmm. some will say three, some will say zero, they will not come. One church I was preaching at, the pastor said the day before, the Saturday, he asked them, let's go. And he called every, for the first time, they didn't take their pastor's call. Wow. <laughs> yes, they will not wow. go. And so it, it's, it's, it's a scary thing. Why would people not go for, for the thing that's supposed to be the great adventure? You know, a man called Ron Lewis said, the Great Commission is the great adventure of Christianity. <laughs> I tell you, believers are losing now. It's a great adventure. It's supposed, it's supposed to be what is supposed to excite the church. One day, I went to preach at the church, and it was midnight, Brother Paul, mm. from 12 midnight to 1 p.m. 
It was a youth all night. And the church was packed with maybe 300, 400 youth. The young people loved to pray. But they gave me one hour to speak about the, yeah, about the Great Commission. Yes. And after I finished, the pastor came. He was so excited. He said, thank you for coming. The young people, when we say all night, they will come. And you know, when we say, oh, picnic, yeah. <laughs> we say, we are going for Easter beach picnic, yeah. We are going to excursion across the yes. yeah. We are doing Christmas party, yeah. We are going for evangelism. <laughs> 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 this is Christian Connector on ETV Ghana. Uh, Apostle Teno, one thing that I've also observed under the sun hall, <laughs> just <laughs> like the preacher would say, <clears throat> one thing I've observed is also people, when they meet their fellow Christians, they still want to talk to them, not necessarily leading them to Christ, but they want them to come to their church. Is it part of the Great Commission? Apostle Teno. Uh, invite, uh, the, the, inviting somebody to church. I would say it's part of the Great Commission. Maybe you are inviting the person, like the doctor said right now, your pastor said, let's go for evangelism. Because some people in the church think that they don't have the message to win souls. So I will step out, invite somebody to my church. When he comes, the pastor will preach and lead him to Christ. That's what some people think. Mm. That me, I can't win a soul, I can't mm. preach, but I can move the person to church for my pastor to do the preaching and the winning of the soul. Mm. And one thing I also want to say quickly is, is Christians, we must, we must realize that the time is short. The time is very, very short. For instance, when you read um, Romans 13, 11 to 12, he said, and that knowing the time, that now it is the high time to wake out he said, to wake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Mm. The time is short. Mm. If I can add to what he said. Yeah. So, uh, to Christians inviting others to their churches mm -hmm. is... For many times it's wrong. It's more like, and, and we are recycling, and that's not <laughs> evangelism. When you come, and so one person leaves one denomination and goes to another denomination, mm -hmm. so you can't. But then we are just recycling. That's a number of times. That's what happens. But evangelism, a great commission, is to tell or share the gospel with people who have not heard. You know, if I should touch on the gospel, you asked and their question, I didn't get to complete it. In First Corinthians chapter fifteen, you find it there. It says, uh, verse one, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you receive and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved. Verse 2, if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you, otherwise you have believed in vain. And then in verse 3 it says, For what I receive I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and, and then he appeared to Peter and the rest. So the, the, the gospel message deals with the death, the burial, and the resurrection, and that's where it comes come out from Easter. And so telling someone, oh, leave your church, come to my church is powerful, my pastor is powerful, my pastor mm -hmm. is anointed. That, is, that one is not evangelism. It's okay to invite people to your church, but that is not evangelism. Evangelism is telling what Christ has done on the cross and how people can be saved. And so we should do the right thing and get the Christian population to get people to be saved. Redeem mm. them from the kingdom of light to the kingdom of darkness. Mm. Not just throw them, drop them from one church to another. We have to encourage people to rather do the right thing. Uh, right. So the Great Commission, is it um, something that is supposed to be attained at a particular time? I think you gave a quote mm -hmm. at the beginning, though, yes. but... Is it something that we can say, okay, now we've reached or the Great Commission has been accomplished? When that happens, you and I will not be here. <laughs> because Matthew 24, 14, it says, And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached to all nations as a testimony. Then the end will come. So in theology, we call it the theology of the imminent return. When that is done, we don't know when the last person will hear the, the gospel. Does it mean they have become Christians or born again? Mm. But the moment the gospel, because now there's technology, there's satellite, there's media. But once that is attained, so there's a very good question, Brother Paul. 
we don't know as human beings, but once that is obtained, that's when Jesus will come again. There's a second coming. He came the first time. That's why we celebrated Easter. The first time was to die for our sins, to preach the gospel, and to die on the cross for our sins. And he has accomplished that 2,000 years ago. And the second time he's coming, he's coming again. The trumpet will blow. <laughs> and the Bible says the dead in Christ will rise first, and we who are still alive. That's why we need to preach the gospel with such urgency and passion. You know, it's true. You know, Brother Paul, what happened at PT? Very sad story. We prayed for our brothers there, and there was an explosion. And, and, and the, the story we read on the news, in your journalist, you covered it. The driver went around warning people. He said, this thing is going to explode because the truck caught fire. And he knew the fire would get to the explosives. And when it gets to explosives, it's going to be a massive explosion. And so he knowing, having that knowledge, he went around. The news stories have it that he went to the schools. And, and, and told the head teacher and then got all the schools, people ran and took their people to save keeping, mm. you know, and it, but there was a woman who said the son came and took her and to the place that was safe and took the grandmother. And now he's asking for his son, 20 year olds are saw on the news. And the boy went back with his camera filming. And the man said, run, this is dangerous. This is gonna explode. And unfortunately this 20 year old passed on because when there was an explosion, he died. And that's the thing with the Great Commission because we say there's heaven and the cell. Jesus says, I am coming back. And the question you ask is, when the Great Commission is fulfilled, Jesus will come back, the trumpet will blow. And if your name is not found in the book of life, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, that you are washed with the blood, and you, and you are saved, and you are sanctified, and you are a child of God, then you are not going to go. You, what they call the left behind, mm -hmm. and the rapture will be raptured. <laughs> it will be glorious. <laughs> wow. It will wow. be glorious. <laughs> wow, indeed, it will be glorious. Our time will fast spread, so, but so um, quick Quickly, um, Apostle Tenor, as you give us your final words, I would like you to also answer the question, if someone does not partake in the Great Commission, will the person go to hell, uh, heaven? You, uh, I won't say the person, you will go to heaven, but as the uh, doctor said earlier on, you, you, you disobeyed God in some way. You did not do the... God, I, I have never seen anywhere in the Bible that it said, if you don't win a soul, you go to hell. No. You may be saved, but maybe the rewards of soul winning, mm -hmm. you may not get it. Crowns. You became a, the, you will not get the crown. Mm -hmm. You just became a church goer. Mm -hmm. You, yourself, and your family. Mm -hmm. So you died and you went to heaven, fine. Mm -hmm. But the rewards that comes with soul winning, you, you, are, you are not part. The crowns, mm -hmm. when they are selling the crowns, you are not part. Mm -hmm. And in, uh, my last words, as we say, is that I want to tell my brothers, my sisters out there, is that the time is short. We should wake up and do more evangelism work. We should wake up and do more soul winning works. We should, those who cannot go, should sponsor, should help with their funds. The work is very, very tedious and we need people to support the work. We need to people to push us with their resources, with their funds. Maybe you may be busy, you may not like to go, but you have the passion to go, but you are not getting time because of your work. Sponsor the person who has been going the one who has been going every day, make sure your resources are pushing them. And I believe that at the end, God will bless all of us. Amen. So, uh, uh, Reverend Dr. Uh, Ray Mensa Mensa, uh, your final words, please. My final words is the time is short. Our Master and Lord Jesus Christ is coming soon. He said, I'm coming soon. So if you're watching this program, Christian Connect, and you don't have Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, I want to tell you this is an important time. We just celebrate this. It's so wonderful to give your life to Christ. All you have to say is, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Save me. I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. That's for the one who is not a Christian. And for you, if you're a believer, I want to challenge you. Wake up from your sleeping. Wake up from, from your slumber. Wake up. The time is short. One day he will come. And you will get to heaven by he will ask you, who did you come with? We can't, you won't take your iPhone 13 or whatever, you won't take your car, you won't take your house, you won't take anything that you have. The only thing you can take to heaven is the disciple you made, the soul you want for Christ. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing. And you get to heaven, you see that you have left everything. He said, what would it profit a man if he gains the whole world but loses his soul? Mm -hmm. Don't lose your soul of the things that will destroy you. Give your life to Christ fully and, you know, Mm. Uh, so we need on the Great Commission is a natural outflow of our Christian life. He right. said the, the, the spirit of Christ is a spirit of, 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 of mission. The more you get closer to him, the more you want to share the, the gospel. So share the gospel. Don't be afraid. Resist fear. The greatest evangelists, they've told me, they all battle with fear. So when you want to share the gospel, fear will come. But say, get it behind me, Satan. Resist fear, reject fear, and share the gospel in your Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the rest of the earth. And, and we say pray, give, go. Just pray, give, 
and go. Support those who are going, like he said, and we can complete the Great Commission. It's too big for one mm -hmm. individual organization. We have to do it together. Now is the time. Now is the time. Now is the time. And my both guests agree that the time is short. The time is short. And Christ is indeed coming again. And as uh, Reverend Dr. Ray Mesa said, it is going to be glorious. It's going to be exciting. Yeah. So please just partake in it. My name is Paul Anamakori. And thank you so much for always being part of this show. And as I said, as you continue to watch as you even share this show on Facebook and share to other people, they are all part of the Great Commission. And I believe together the Great Commission will be accomplished on the day that our Lord Jesus Christ will come. Thank you so much for being part of it. My name is Paul Ann McCordy. Have a great Sunday.